Okay, Mr. Sobe Wetfly, hair wing wet fly for steelhead. It's one of my newer favorite flies to fish. Uh, and when I say newer, probably within the last 10 years, I came up with this little guy inspired by my buddy Brian. Um, start the thread just a little bit forward of the point, and then you're going to have this uh, green mylar. Usually it comes with red on one side, green on the other. I want the green against the hook shank because that's what I want to be exposed. So I'm just going to slide this up under like this with the green against the shank, pull that to length. This is a nice way to do this. Just slide it up under rather than try and tie it in. Okay, now we're going to do the, I'm going to get this down just forward of the point. So that thread's hanging just forward of the point, maybe one more. And I'm going to do the down and back technique. Just going to roll this down, wind this down. I'm going to go about midway between the point and the barb and head back up. And it's not an exact measurement to me. Sometimes it's a little closer to the barb, sometimes it's halfway. You can see the bottom line is it's about that long. That's about how I like it. That tag. I'm gonna tie that off. And that down and back technique it just gives you a nice, beautiful, smooth, smooth layer of mylar there, that green mylar. See all these little pieces here? You can just leave them hang right in there and we'll tie them in later with the rest of our body. So now for a tail, I use, I like to use uh, it's kind of a green, lime green, chartreuse, golden pheasant crest. I've already selected one out of here. You kind of want to use one about the length that you wouldn't want to take a real long one of these to tie your short tail. Right? So you kind of you kind of look for the, the length that you need. I mean, you don't cut it to length. So I want this just to hang. That tail is going to just come back beyond the bend of the hook a little bit. I tend to tie mine, you know, we all have our own style. I tend to tie mine a little long. For some people like theirs right just even with the with the with the bend of the hook back there. Sometimes I'll tie some stuff way back there sometimes. In this case, just a little over. Tie that right in on top, use this little pinch technique in between my fingers and always tie pull the tension up. If you've got something on top of the hook shank, you want to pull the tension up. If you've got something on the far side of it, you always want to pull in the opposite direction. So that turned out pretty nice. That went well. Sometimes those golden pheasant crests can give you fits. But that case worked well. I'm going to trim this down a little bit right there. And then I'll tie this down just a little bit. Okay, now I'm ready for my body. This is a fairly simple fly. It could be simpler. You could just dub something or tie some chenille, but I, I use this peacock, peacock curl. I've got about, oh, seven or eight strands here. You always want to tie them in by the tip to get a natural taper moving forward. But this peacock is very delicate, fragile, I should say, breaks real easy. So you want to tie in some wire with it. I don't rib this fly. This wire will do the trick. The so first thing I'm going to do is just trim those ends straight. And then I'm going to put this wire right next to it. Right in there with it. I'm going to tie it right in on top of that. Just forward of the, of the crest tail. You need to have some scissors just for wire or use it really down on the base. Cause when you're trying to cut fine feathers, you don't want to dull those tips. So be careful when you're cutting wires. It's good to have a dedicated pair of scissors. All right, so next thing is I'm gonna pull this wire and all this stuff is hurl real nice and tight. There's probably a lot of ways to do this. This is just how I've always done it. Put my hackle pliers on there and I'm just gonna kind of twist it. Make sure you pull that wire tight and just twist it up. And you're kind of creating one broke. That's okay. Pluck it out and it'll all work out. Like I said, they're pretty fragile. Twist it, twist it. 
Okay, now you can see I've made a nice little rope. I'm just gonna tie all this down along the shank. Get it all nice and lashed down, nice and smooth and as even as you can. And I'm gonna come up to just over the, the return of the, the hook eye. And I'm gonna wind this up. And I am doing this body in parts. This peacock part is gonna go about two thirds, somewhere between two thirds and three quarters up the shank. And you see that winds in real nice, just like a, it's homemade chenille is what it is. I just wind that up nice and even. That wire really nice. Makes it nice and durable and comes up really nice. So there we go. So about closer to three quarters and two thirds. Tie that down. Make sure it's good and secure. Three wraps, four wraps should do. Get in there nice and tight. Trim that stuff away. And then I give it a couple extra securing wraps. It all looks good to me right now. So there's your the bulk of your body. Now next, I like to use kind of some synthetic polar dubbing, or you can use goat, whatever you like. This is what I use, kind of sparkly. It's this dubbing, and I'm gonna, you could twist it on there, but I like to make a dubbing loop. I always go around the dubbing loop about two times. Make it nice and secure. Put my hackle pliers down on the, you could use a dubbing twister, but I like to use the hackle pliers, just for, especially since I'm using a nice small piece. I just put the hackle pliers on the base of that thread, made that nice loop, and then just put some material in that loop. Pinch it off right below the material, give it a spin. There we go. And that should spin around nice. Oops, broke, came off there. All right. There we go. I want this nice and loose like this because I want it really to be shaggy and buggy as we say. Just a couple nice wraps of that's all you really need. Tie it off. Trim it away. And then I push this all back and just make a couple wraps of thread right in front of it. And you see how nice and loose that is? That's because of the way I tied it in. If you just dub that in, touch dub that, you'd kind of you'd have to pick it out. Or maybe brush it out with a little brush, but this comes out just right, just by the way I dubbed it in that loop. Pick out any loose ones, and we are ready to roll. Moving along, we need a collar. So there's your tail, your ta your tag, your tail, body, two thirds to three quarter peacock curl, and gives it a nice. You should see this thing in the water. It's killer. All right, so now I like a uh, hackle of uh, guinea. And again, it's that kind of lime green chartreuse. I, to me, it's more lime green than chartreuse. More, I think chartreuse is a little more yellow. I could be wrong, but it looks like lime green to me. So I'm gonna prep this feather like we do. Just trim off all the fluff and get right down into the, right down into the, the fibers that you want. The length that you want. And I like this one to go almost to the, if not to the point of the hook. Little, not a short little collar. This is a nice long collar to match that nice long tail, right? So I go in there and I find it. I'm about right there. Pull all this back. When I say find it, there's my collar right there. 
right? Pull out just what I want, about two to three wraps, and that's all. And that's it right there. And I'm going to, you don't need to do this, but I like to. I got in the habit of doing this. I just trim the tip away a little bit, leave a little, just a little tight, trim off some nubs on the ends. Just a little bit there. I tie this in by this tip when I left that little nub on my side of the hook, about 45 degree angle. And I've left it I've trimmed off a little more than I should have. I'm gonna need to just get that little chunk out of there. Okay. You always want to have a nice clean surface to tie to. There we go. It's in, it's secured. Give it a little tug, make sure you don't, you know, don't rip on it, but you want to make sure it's in there because nothing more frustrating than getting two turns on there and then it pops out. You can use your hackle pliers or you can just use this nice handle you left yourself. I'll use the hackle pliers in this case. And you want to fold that feather back, fold those fibers back as you turn, as you wrap. Fold back, wrap, whoopsie, it happens. Pull back, oh, I lost it there. That's all right, let's, I don't know what happened there, Mark. Oh, okay, we're recovered. Just got underneath the thread there. All right, when I lost it, just fold as you go. And everything, if you if you fold as you go and you prepped it like I do, did, it just, everything flows back nicely. You don't have to force it back. It just flows back nicely. And that's how you want it to. A few nice wraps on there. Three to four wraps to secure it. Turn that out. Looking good. Makes me want to go put it in the water right now. Okay. Now we just need a wing and we're done. We're ready to go fish this thing. So I like to use polar bear. If you can't get polar bear, you can use calf tail. You can use goat. You can use all kinds of any substitute you like. But I'll pick my wing out. You know, as far as the size of the wing goes, again, there's no magic formula for this, but I just kind of go with the way things look. And hydrodynamically, it matters that it's not too, too much, not too thin. So everything rides nice and true. But there's also a look to it that comes with that. If that was my wing, I think that'd be too much. You, know, you think that'd be too much? Yeah, I do. If this was my wing, that'd be too little. Something like that is about right. You just have to experiment. So I'm gonna pull this out, find the piece I want, trim it off, pull all that fluff out, out of the bottom. I think you've probably seen a hundred times now how to prep a hair wing, but we're gonna do it again. Just pull all this out. You don't have to stack it, but it's kind of nice to even that up a little bit. And we'll put this in the stacker. Give it a few taps. If you have a dog, he will bark. Obviously, there's no dog here right now, or you would be hearing him or her. Okay. Now, once I pull it out of the stacker and the wings are nice and the tips are nice and even, I just kind of go in there and just, just kind of take out a little bit more of that fluff and really get it good so I have a nice solid base, even base to tie to, and it works it down to the side of it. This thing, this wing looks a little big to me still, so I'm just gonna by pinching down on the bottom so I don't move down at the base. I'm just gonna pull some out, pinch it at the base so you don't destroy the wing. You're just pulling out firmly the ones you don't want. And that's all part of it, you know. You gotta fuss a little and play a little. Don't you know? Don't overthink it, but get it just how you like it. Okay, and the length of this wing, again, you know, that'd be too long, that'd be too short. 
That's about just right. It kind of falls right in the curve of that golden pheasant crest. Probably even with the point of the, the, the bend of the hook. So here's how I do this. It takes some practice, but it works out pretty clean. And that is to find your spot where you want to tie it in. And I, I trim all this off first. If you just tied it in, it'd be really hard to get in there and trim those ends. So I just trim it right off right here. There it is. And then lay it down. Nice and firm. It'll take a kind of a loose wrap to catch it, catch those fibers. And then, man, you just go for it. Do not let go. No peeking. Not yet. There we go. It worked good and that wing is in there nice and firm. I have one little little hair in there. I'm gonna just go ahead and use the cauterizer and just get there's literally there's one fiber in there that got out of place. Yep. Great tool to have. I think you've seen this one before too. I I I can't believe I tied for all those years without one of those. Be careful with it though. You don't want to cut your thread. Okay, we're there. I'm going to take my whip finisher. And when I do my fishing flies, I usually do this twice. I don't care if there's just a little bit more bulk in that head. It just makes it a little more secure, mainly because I use a turtle knot and it double turtle knot and it kind of takes its toll on the head of that fly. I use a little bit of head cement. And usually I'll come back and put another, another little coat on after that one dries. And there you have it. There's the Mr. Selby ready to rip. Good luck with that one. I think you should try it. It's uh, it's super productive, fun to fish. Thank you much.